So 25 years ago, where I'm standing would have been intensively managed agricultural land. But today, on a hot summer's day, this landscape is absolutely thriving. Obviously this cow pad has been baked in the sun, so underneath, now you can see all of the insects flying out. Look at all of them. That's not the first time I played with the cow pat and that certainly won't be the last. I mean, just look at these stalks. This landscape looks, sounds, and feels like something akin to the savannah. Well, a British version of it. It's like nothing I'd ever experienced before in the UK and it's all because of rewilding. Could you, could you see me? I was hiding behind there. So, so yeah, we've come, we've come to Nep, and this is this is what I'm calling the most biodiverse place in England. And look, come on, it's not officially the most biodiverse place in England, but you'd be hard pressed to find anywhere that holds more biodiversity than right here. Nep has been extensively studied since its transformation some 20 years ago, and the findings of these reports are concluding that rewilding is a damn good thing for biodiversity. Now, rewilding has a few definitions, but in the context of Nep, it's been a tool to manage for the landscape by allowing nature to take the lead, sitting back and allowing the land to breathe. But, as well as nature being left to do its thing, there's also another very crucial part to Nep's recovery too which we'll explore in this video. While at NEP, I met up with Cookie. He'd recently just been doing some filming for his own YouTube channel, Wildlife with Cookie, and he was kind enough to come back and show me some of the best spots he'd found. You're like a NEP expert, right? Oh yeah, for sure. I see all the wildlife here. Yeah. He genuinely loves seeing wild animals and his channel captures that passion. Plus, he's just an all-round top guy. So, cheers Cookie. Just over two decades ago, like many of its kind, NEP was a traditionally run agricultural estate. It had a dairy farm and it did its best to produce crops, but after decades of struggling to successfully farm the land due to the claggy clay muddy soils, owners Charlie and Isabella said, we need to try something else or we're going to go under. And at the time, they decided to do something that was seemingly radical. They sold all of the farm equipment, removed the farming infrastructure and did absolutely nothing with the land. It was a bold step toward a new vision. I mean, imagine owning this farm back in the day when it was unproductive, it wasn't making any money and you were struggling. Imagine if Charlie and Isabella could have seen it how it is now. It was a real risk, but it, it's paid off. As well as sitting back and doing nothing, the real key to NEP's success was the introduction of large, free-roaming grazing animals. This is known as grazing ecology. This is the idea that large herbivores and their influence to vegetation is fundamental to the functioning of natural and healthy landscapes. I mean, think about it. Before humans had the huge influence that we have today, our lands would have had many more plants and plant-eating animals in them too. And at NEP, there are many large, free-roaming herbivores all interacting with the landscape, the vegetation, in a different way. So this is the kind of landscape which you think about when you think of Nep. This kind of like mosaic of like brambles and hawthorn. But when you see it, you can just see how it's been shaped by the grazing animals. I mean, there's poop absolutely everywhere. It's awesome. All right, so I think that's the last time I'll be playing with poop in this video, but it's actually that poop that enriches the soil. It's the grazing, the movement, the disturbance, which creates this dynamic mosaic of habitats. And in nature, it's diversity which increases resilience and creates more opportunities for life. So here to my left, it might just look like a bunch of vegetation, but it's actually really cool. And I was waiting for how long it would take for me to find this. Just here, that is an oak tree planted by a jay. Jays come along and they stash their acorns in these patches of bramble and hawthorn and scrub. Sometimes the acorns, they germinate and they begin growing into trees. But the really cool thing is, actually there's a few cool things going on here. Firstly, it's the fact that these acorns would never have been able to have grown without the jay stashing them there. But without this protection, they'd have just been gobbled up by all of the animals which graze through here. This is natural succession happening. So if you're interested in rewilding and you want to learn more, let me tell you about the brand new course that's just been released by Ecology Training because it's on the topic of rewilding. Now, this course takes an extensive look into the topic. It's going to teach you way more than I can teach you in these videos. I mean, right now, I'm just a sweaty, overexcited British guy who's running around. I'm having fun and I hope you're having fun too, but I want to be able to do more of these videos. I want to be able to do more for you and provide you with a way 
that you can learn and ecology training is the way to do that. Now this rewilding course is online. You can take it anywhere and do it whenever you want. It's introductory, you don't have to have this whole raft of background information and knowledge in order to understand it. Ecology training really is the best way for you to expand your skill, your skill sets and perhaps start to pursue a career in working with nature and ecology. Whether if you're a beginner, a student or a professional ecologist, they have something for you. Go and check it out, see what they have, and remember to use the code 10 leave curious uh, in order to get 10% off all online courses. Thank you to Ecology Training for sponsoring this video. So I only spent about a day and a half at NEP and I saw so much and I was able to capture some of it for you too. The storks were probably the most striking. I'd never seen them in the wild before with their huge nests atop of the old oak trees. The clattering of their beaks and catching them in flight really made the place feel, well, not like England. Knowing the significance of the grazing animals, I really enjoyed seeing the Exmoor ponies and the Longhorn cattle, both sheltering from the midday sun and grazing in the cooler hours of the afternoon. I really wanted to see the Tamworth pigs, but they were probably off chilling somewhere out of the sun, but there was evidence of their rootling. And what was really special was seeing the turtle doves, under the guidance of Cookie, where he'd seen them a few days before. They're special because since the 1970s, they've declined by 98% in the UK, and they came to NEP of their own accord, choosing this newly wild landscape for themselves. And then there's everything that I didn't capture. So one thing which I think I'm not quite capturing is just the, just the atmosphere here. The level of detail when you get down on the ground, you see little spiders, you see little flies. Nature really is just thriving here. What I'd recommend is that you visit NEP if you can for yourself, just to experience it. There's so much that I haven't covered in this video about NEP that I will do in future videos. So please drop any questions or thoughts down in the comments. This is another big old oak tree, they've got heaps here. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, then do all the YouTube things like commenting and subscribing. Say what's up down in the comments. I love hearing from you guys down there. And if you want more from Leaf Curious, there is the members now on YouTube where I'm doing a behind the scenes vlog with everything I get up to here and all the work I do with Mossy Earth as well. And remember, if you want to learn more about rewilding, check out Ecology Training. Don't forget to use the code Leaf Curious 10 to get 10% off all online courses. Thanks again for watching. Leave curious.